The Honorable Helen Clark will present the Chairman's Award to Sir Richard Branson. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as the United Nations Development Program works in every country reported on by the International Crisis Group, as administrator, I read rather a lot of the reports and I greatly value the work of the group. So it's a great pleasure to be here this evening and to be invited to present the Chairman's Award to Sir Richard Branson for his visionary leadership as an entrepreneur and as a philanthropist. Everyone here is familiar with Sir Richard's flair and innovation in business, his obvious enthusiasm for everything he undertakes, and his commitment to a life with dignity for people and for a sustainable world. Sir Richard once called peace, and I quote, the highest human aspiration, worth standing up for at any time. And Sir Richard himself has stood up for peace many times in his life, beginning with activism in his teens. He has consistently supported finding peaceful solutions to conflict and has spoken up for those who are the victims of conflict. As a co-founder of the Elders, he had the vision to see how such an eminent group could do so much to promote peace, human rights, and positive change. Sir Richard has also brought his rigorous business approach to tackling climate change with the Carbon War Room, harnessing the resources and influence of the world's top entrepreneurs around this important cause. And he has lent his own voice time and time again to the cause of wildlife conservation. Just recently, I saw he was meeting business leaders in Vietnam as part of the Stop Using Rhino Horn campaign. Through his words and deeds, Sir Richard shows us all how business and business leaders can be such hugely positive forces for good in our world. And I cannot think of a better recipient for the Chairman's Award than Sir Richard Branson. Sir Richard, it is my great pleasure to invite you to come forward and receive this award now. Thank you, Helen. I promise that I will now wear the all-black shirt this weekend with pride. <laughs> they, um, um, and also, thank you very much to the International Crisis Group for this honor. Um, I'm also very, very humbled to be here amongst this wonderful group of people being recognized tonight. I am here tonight representing an amazing family of people at Virgin, Virgin Unite, and a wide group of partners and supporters who believe strongly that we can create a world of lasting peace and prosperity. It is not, I believe, a utopian ideal, but a vision that can be achieved in our lifetimes. So this award is theirs too. As some of you know, almost five decades ago, I realized that a formal education just wasn't for me. So I left school, I moved to London, and I decided it was time to see what the University of Life had to offer. Well, this was at the height of the Vietnamese War, a conflict that stood for everything that my generation thought was wrong with the world. A world where division seemed a far greater force than unity. A world where the concerns and aspirations of ordinary people seemed to matter less and less. As is often the case, young people were the first to speak out. And so a movement grew that took to the streets across Europe and the US and challenged the establishment not just on Vietnam, but on virtually everything that embodied old, entrenched interests. To help that movement find its voice, a few friends and I launched a magazine called Student, and soon we found ourselves right in the middle of the big intellectual debates of the day. It was an experience as exciting as it was stimulating. Well, after decades as a serial entrepreneur, I have in recent years tried to focus my energies on some of the bigger global issues that affect us all, from conflict to climate change, from reforming drug policy, together with George Soros and others, to ending the death penalty. It's a different calling, but one I try to approach with the same optimism and energy that has guided my business career. 
The work that ICG is doing is so important since if there is conflict, there is no chance to lift people out of poverty, no chance to focus on climate change or to deliver basic human rights. So inspired by the late Nelson Mandela, Peter Gabriel and myself worked with a wonderful group of partners to launch The Elders, a group of independent global leaders who have no other ag agenda than that of humanity and who work together for peace and human rights. The ICG has been a great partner to help guide the important work the elders are doing to help stop and resolve conflicts. As business leaders, we have a wonderful opportunity and we have an equal responsibility to play a role in solving some of the tougher global challenges. Recently, we've worked with many partners, including Mo Ibrahim, who I saw here tonight, and Paul Pullman, to create the B Team, a group of global business leaders working towards a better way of doing business for the well-being of people and the planet. Working with the Carbon War Room and Rocky Mountain Institute, we've also seen how market-based solutions to carbon reduction can succeed. By working together, we'll be able to take on the greatest challenge of our lifetimes, ensuring that we reduce carbon and that we protect the natural ecosystems that keep us alive. And as a member of the Global Commission on Drug Policy, I've had the privilege of serving alongside some wonderful leaders who agree that the failed war on drugs has caused nothing but harm and suffering, a war in itself. While there's much that remains to be done, the mission of everyone in this room is never going to be fully accomplished but it is occasions like today that remind me of what I learned during those turbulent days in the 1960s. Whatever you do, aim to make people's lives better. In business, as in philanthropy, there is no greater return on investment than a convention defied, a challenge overcome, and a spirit lifted. Thank you so much. Thank you.